how are you in Hollywood and you're not woke and you and you say all these provocative things? How how have you not been kicked out yet? Um, I don't know. I'm waiting for them to kick me out any, any day. <laughs> any day no. um, and it's I mean it's hard to say really what professional opportunities I've you know have been precluded from because of my political beliefs. Mm. But at the end of the day, it's you know it's too late for me to like course correct now and pretend to be woke um and the podcast has probably also afforded me other opportunities that i wouldn't have had had Mm -hmm. otherwise well and you're doing the smart thing you're becoming a creator of content not just in Mm -hmm. the podcast but making your own films now and that's Mm -hmm. that's really the way forward right where you maintain control because you can go directly to the audience and the audience is there well i think yeah like academia hollywood is another institution um that is sort of bolstered by uh, this paradoxical kind of like unreality. I mean, like the Oscars this year, like I don't really know anyone who saw any of those movies even. Mm, exactly yeah. right. But I think like the the silver lining of this um, crisis of faith and institutions that we're experiencing is that there's a real opportunity for independent creators to come to the fore and cultivate their own large and diverse and organic audiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing that more and more. And it's nice to see that the audience is there. And then you see these institutions try to crack down on it. They try to crack Mm -hmm. down on Substack or Patreon or um, whatever podcast. And, you know, Joe Rogan over at Spotify, you could go down the list. Even now there's talk about how, well, you know, at Substack, nobody edits you. You're sort of the mainstream elitist journalist. Well, no one, no one's there to edit. Oh, sure, because that's worked out so well at places like the New York Times, which claimed something like 987,000 children had been killed in America from COVID. <laughs> um, hello, no, I so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The COVID reporter, the COVID reporter, printed that in one of her reports as if the editor is some magic button without which the rest of us are untrustworthy. Yeah, and I think the the silent majority does feel the crisis of, of legitimacy yeah. in, in media, academia, Hollywood, all of these institutions. Yeah. And obviously, I mean, the rise of uh, fact checkers and experts is an attempt by the institutions to issue a corrective to the fact that um, they are getting more and more competition from extra institutional sources. Mm hmm. And I mean, you tell me how this, if if at all, relates to, you know, the old Soviet Union. Um, While they're doing the fact checks and the the attempts at speech control, they're manipulating us like Facebook and Instagram, you know, and the whistleblower that came out. And then the what we've learned about how they're really just amassing data on us to try to further manipulate us to to really hurt our mental health without one care for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think like the chief distinction, we mentioned the similarities between the USSR and the USA. The chief distinction is that um, in the USSR, at least this was nominally enforced from a top down authority in the United States. It's much more decentralized. So nobody is ever really held accountable for spreading misinformation or for smearing others or abusing facts. And it's done through, I think, like. Um, what looks like a coordinated attempt, but not, but need not be between like the state and various corporate entities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you look, just look at the shitstorm that's come the way of Elon Musk since he said he wanted to buy Twitter. You know, mm-hmm, it's like yeah. the pile on this guy, the demonization of him. The New York Times basically called him a, a white supremacist because when he was seven, he wasn't marching in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Well, he, he just offends their, yeah, their liberal sensibilities. Yeah. But yeah. Um, with social media, I mean, like Anna said, if it's about, it's designed to demoralize you, to sort of overwhelm you with things that um, trigger and upset you mm-hmm. so that you become invested in using it and ultimately, yeah, your mental health deteriorates. Mm-hmm. And I think we've really seen that post-COVID um happen in the extreme because people are like sequestered in their homes and only really have access to what they perceive as reality through social media. Mm. I wonder mm-hmm. if that's why the, you know, the left seemed to lose its mind more than the right during COVID because uh, most Republicans or people who are not established left 
did not listen to all those mandates. They, they did go out. They did see their friends. They had social gatherings. They basically thumbed a middle finger at the most extreme lockdown policies, whereas the left was extremely compliant and I think paid a dear price for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think... Um, I think, by the way, Elon Musk, I want to tell the audience there was an update on that today, which we thought was important to get. Uh, uh, disturbingly, yeah, for those of us... I was just going to ask you, is he buying Twitter? Is he not um, buying Twitter? It doesn't, took a turn in the wrong direction today. Mm-hmm. He um, asserted uh, that he has the right not to consummate <laughs> his acquisition of Twitter and that he has, quote, a right to terminate the merger agreement, according to a letter from his lawyers to the Twitter lawyers that was sent today. Um, he's ostensibly disputing data uh, he wants twitter to provide him with information that will help facilitate his evaluation of spam and fake accounts he says that they've understated the number of fake accounts on twitter they say it's mm-hmm. only five percent he says it could be as high as 20 plus uh, mm-hmm. which would mean he's buying a product that's less valuable right if it's 20 percent bots so he wants the real data and um as, as i understand it he signed a deal that said i'm basically buying twitter as is which anybody mm-hmm. who's ever bought a car or a house that way knows it means you don't get to kick the tires you don't get to back out right. because of due diligence or because you find out the house has termites. And if the Twitter house has termites and he actually signs such a deal, that's not going to be helpful. But anyway, he's saying he does have the right to back out, a right to terminate the merger agreement. And that's sad, especially because Tesla stock now is suffering and there's going to be layoffs over there. So he's kind of, you know, he needs that money. Anyway, I want to see him buy it. I think Twitter will be a better place if he takes it over. So i I want all these problems to clear up. And of course, these people who write about yeah. Elon feel exactly the opposite. Yeah, well, it'll at least be interesting. I think it would be interesting. Yeah, he, I mean, I, I don't think it is about the bot accounts for him. I think it is, it does have to do more with the the economy mm-hmm. yeah. and it no longer maybe being the wisest mm-hmm. purchase. Right, exactly. It's too bad though. I mean, he has it to burn, so he should burn it. But easy yeah. for me to say. <laughs> easy for me to say. <laughs> Are the high fuel costs putting a damper on your summer vacation plans? From higher prices at the pump to a jump in airfare, it's getting more expensive to get away for a week. But what if you could soak up those vacation vibes year-round? Get a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas. Whether you want to stay close to to home this summer or just want to extend your break, a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas can transform your backyard into an oasis. It combines the benefits of a pool with the therapy of a hot tub. Michael Phelps Swim Spas by Master Spas have a water current so you can swim, do aquatic exercises, or just have fun with the kids. This is going to reinvent your family time. You will love it and your family and friends will too. Michael Phelps Swim Spas by Master Spas come in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard, even if it's a small one. And since it's heated, you can use it year-round in any climate. Michael Phelps Swim Spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. Go to masterspas.com, put in the promo code MK to save $1,000 on a Michael Phelps Swim Spa or $500 on a Master Spas hot tub. That's masterspas.com, promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.